2005, I entered junior high and middle school. It wasn't that scary because I had my cousin Santiago Lemus with me. He was a year younger though, so I did like middle school and sixth grade by myself. So I was in seventh grade. We started out like any other middle school, we went to our first dance. We ran to the cafeteria. We played hide and go seek until we were really tired in the morning and we didn't want to go. And then September 23rd, 2005, that all changed. He woke up, so my cousin Santiago woke up with pools in his muscles, tenderness in his back, but he didn't want to stay home for that. So he went to school and went to the cafeteria and had breakfast. Well, he tried to get up and he couldn't get up. We didn't know what was going on. He was like, screaming and agonizing him. So the paramedics were called. Soon the paramedics became the ambulance. The ambulance was helicopters. And by 3.30, September 25th, we were at San Diego's Children's Hospital at the Ronald McDonald's house. And they told us that Santiago has transverse myelitis. It's a neurological disorder caused by inflammation of the spinal cord. Myelitis refers to the inflammation of the spinal cord, and inflammation is the process of the spinal cord. And transversely, he describes the position of it. The damage can destroy mayline. The damage of mayline causes nervous system scars, which interrupts communication between your spinal cord and the rest of your body. Although some patients recover from transverse myelitis with minor effects such as kinder or sore limbs, occasional numbness in lower and upper back. Sadly, this was not the case for my sixth grade cousin Santiago, who was left paralyzed from the waist down. So our lives dramatically changed. We didn't run to the cafeteria anymore. Instead, we walked slow so he could catch up with us. We didn't play hide and seek. We did, but it was kind of sad because he would just count and we couldn't participate. We didn't go to dances, we went to prom, but we didn't want to have too much fun without him on the side, so we just made him feel comfortable. Which brings me to my three main points which I'll be talking about today. Number one is simply being wheelchair bound. All of a sudden, your life changes. You can't get up to brush your teeth. You've got to transfer the slide board into your chair. You have to have a bathroom big enough that fits you. Um, secondly, is trying to be wheelchair bound and going to college. And third is the lack of funding that people actually offer for wheelchair bound students. Mm. All students consider similar facts when narrowing their choice of colleges to attend, <clears throat> such as size, distance from home, offered courses, majors, activities, etc., etc. Students with disabilities have to also consider additional factors, accessible housing facilities, accommodations in and out of the classroom, the, avail the availability and accessibility of assistance, the extent and expense of health services. Um, Jessica McCrane, Philadelphia Disability Examiner, March 27, 2009, blog. The new classes, new scenery, New people add stress to anyone, but the emotions are extremely high for a Wilbon chair student. Um, finding a college friendly or accessible is very hard. According to Stacy Disick, the spokesperson for Walk Alive, Walk Alive Foundation, reports there are 3 million wheelchair bound people in the world, and 40% of them attend college of some sort, university, junior college, or online. Um, on January 24, 2010, Jonathan Zaplin, editor of the University of Maine's Activities Program, was quoted saying this. We may have great disability services programs that help students academically, but for wheelchair bound students, accessibility is not a main priority or focus of our university. Rick Reb, coordinator of disabilities classes or hotlines in place for wheelchair bound students on dealing with new surrounding and changes of colleges, was quoted saying the 40% of students going to college, only 13% graduate, only 7% return, and only 2% stay for longer than two years because of the lack of 
feel uncomfortable and stuff. Um, sorry. A team of social doctors on October 21st, 2009 visited 144 schools to see how they were holding up with the American Disabilities Act. Out of 100, it scored 48. Less than half equipped for handicapped people. Universities and local community colleges need to focus effort, like go globally to reach out to disabled wheelchair students and make it a priority. So they're not robbed of the simple things like they're already get from their sickness. You could go to school, like you could go to school. It's not something that should be taken away. It's an experience that everybody should get. So I believe mean, if we all came together to make it a big deal, just as education is to you or I, that it could happen for them and it wouldn't be an inconvenience, it wouldn't be hectic, it wouldn't be hard for them to go to school. It'd be fun and how we go to school. And that's all. Hope you learn some more about what you're about to see Thank you.